Today is my last Sunday here at Living Way for now. Big emphasis on the for now because I will be visiting very, very often. But um, it is my last Sunday before I go off to study at Texas A&M University. And today I want to share with you all a little bit about how serving can lead you to your calling and how your calling can lead you towards your career. I started serving when I was very, very young. I was only eight years old, and I started serving in the kids' ministry as a kid myself because my mom was the director of the ministry at the time, and I wanted to do what my mom did, and I liked watching her. So I started getting involved in the kids, and then from there came Living Way Worship. I got involved in that when I was about 13. And then youth and young adult ministry came and the technical arts. And about a year ago, I was blessed with the opportunity to be one of y'all's pre-service hosts. And in that department is really when the Lord started to reveal to me that working around cameras and working in front of the camera was the calling that he had placed in my life and that that's what I was called to do and that that's what he anointed me with, with that gift. So it became very, very clear to me. And I actually remember the exact moment that the Lord told me that He was going to help me turn my calling into my career. I had just finished pre-service and I was also serving in lyrics that Sunday. So as I was rushing from pre-service to the TA booth to do the lyrics, um, in the couple seconds that I heard the worship music playing, the Lord stopped me and He said, this is your calling and I'm going to help you turn your calling into your career. And I was like, and I was like, oh my goodness, I felt it so strongly in my heart. And I, as I was sitting in the TA booth, I could really just feel him speaking to me and speaking that no matter who you are and that no matter what age you are, you are able to serve and you can make such an impact in your church and in your community. God is so good and he's so faithful. And as soon as I started serving, his favor in my life was so strong and it was so evident and I give him all the glory and I give him all the praise for every opportunity that I've been given here and I, I owe it all to him. I really thank him for all that he's blessed me with and all that he's gonna continue to bless me with. When you choose to serve and when you choose with a humble heart, God's favor will follow you all throughout your life and it doesn't just end there, but it'll follow your children's life and your children's children's life and all the generations to come because our God is that good and He's that faithful. And when you make that decision to serve the King, your life is set and His blessings will just continue to pour and pour out in your life. I actually have this verse that I wanna share with y'all and it comes from Matthew 25, 21. And it says, His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That comes from Matthew 25, 21. So today on this Back to School Sunday, whether you're a student or whether you're a parent or a teacher, no matter your age, I encourage you to get involved in your church and to begin serving. So now I've decided to major in telecommunication media studies. So I'm gonna continue working with and around the camera and that's all thanks to God and because I chose to serve and because I answered the calling that he had over my life. I strongly believe that what the Lord has done for me and what he's doing in my life and what he's gonna to continue to do throughout my life, he can do for you too. Can we give Alexia another hand clap? Come on. Wow. What a gracious gift you have been. And you're not going far for long because we need Alexia. How many know she's been a blessing to the house? Yeah. I mean, like, the, the, the last memory I have when she first started was this like, the kids VBS was doing this like Star Wars theme thing. And I remember like Naomi had her dress in this like Princess Leia costume. <laughs> and she had these big buns right here on the, on the other head. It was hilarious. So yeah, we, we love embarrassing Alexia and, and we're thankful for your life and uh, thankful for what you've done with the ministry. We're just praying more open doors, more favor in this next season, amen? Well. Back to school, and all the kids said, ah, oh. and all the parents said, hallelujah. 
Amen? Excuse me while I get this iPad opened up. Um, man, it's just, been, it's just been awesome, and uh, I'll try to get this thing to work. You know, it always works great. My wife says I'm bad with technology, by the way. Um, but I can run a studio mouse, the recording stuff. So anyways, so uh, back to school. I'm excited to be bringing this message to you this morning. And uh, really, I wanted to start off with something that uh, can give us all a little bit of context uh, for what school looked like for me. And uh, what school looked like for me is in, back in 1999, my parents started what we've known uh, for a long time as Living Way Christian School. Anybody heard of Living Way Christian School? Any warriors in the house? Uh, we had this phrase, what was it? Uh, Living Way, what time is it? Wow, there's some people that know. Was that Mr. B? I, I don't know who it was, but they knew it, like straight up. <laughs> Man, so growing up in Christian school was a little bit different. And, and to take it another layer and another step, growing up in a Christian school that my parents uh, were the principals of, that's even wilder. And um, to say the least, I mean, you had, you had the students that were like, hey, teacher, can we go to recess? Oh, he, he's, his parents are the principal. We can go to recess. And it's like the teacher's like, oh, <laughs> like he's going to tell his parents after class probably and I'm going to get fired if I don't take these kids to recess. And everybody's like, oh, wow, is that true? No, it's not true. It's just, it would happen, the classroom environment. And uh, one of the, you know, the many stories that I could remember uh, that was funny in, in science class, you know, we had this good teacher, he was awesome, science class, and, and he would give these great lectures at the beginning of class. And uh, one of the lectures was on the human body and how it works and and all these intricacies of, you know, how our body is God made and God breathed and everything about it is, you know, God's creation because it was Christian school and all that. And uh, the, one of the students kept bothering the teacher over and over again. And she kept saying, I got to go to the restroom. Can I go, please? Can I go to the restroom? And the teacher's like, after the lecture... I will let you go to the bathroom, right? That's what they always say. I'll give you the hall pass so you can go to the bathroom. And she persisted, persisted. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm about to be my pants. She was tripping out. She said, I gotta go to the restroom. And the teacher, because it's a Christian school, he stood up and said, let me tell you something. You wanna hear something? You wanna hear something smart? You wanna hear something good? God made you. He made your, he gave you the ability to hold your bathroom after the lecture. And that was a little bit, a little look and perspective of what it was like being in Christian school at Living Way Christian School. There was other things that I can't mention from the pulpit, uh, but we had a great time and students were impacted for the kingdom of God and uh, I'm so thankful. A lot of the teachers uh, of that time are in this room and are still educators. Uh, so that's just a testament of God's goodness and God's faithfulness to this house. Um, I want to get started off in Luke 2 this morning. It says, Now when they, they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. We're talking about when Jesus was, you know, just bored and, and they were afraid that Herod was going to kill the child. So the angel told to Joseph, said, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet out of Egypt. I called my son. Now, how does this relate to encouraging educators today? 
what I'm reminded about today is the shooting that just happened recently in Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde, Texas. And what it gives us context to is this, that the spirit of Herod is still running rampant. The spirit of Herod, the, the spirit of Herod to destroy the seed that will lead is still running rampant today. And I'm encouraging educators, teachers, administrators, and students today to stand up and rise and be an agent of change in the sphere that God has given you. And the spirit of Herod is stemmed by anxiety and fear. Did you know that? And most of, if we cross-reference most of these wild school shootings that happened, if we cross-reference everything, it, it all stemmed from a place of isolation and depression and anxiety. And we need more teachers who will be strong enough and more friends, right, and more community with students who will be strong enough to look out for those who are struggling with anxiety, depression. It's at its, at its highest peak that it's ever been in the history of this generation. Anxiety, depression, it's, it's, it's at an all-time high. So we need people who are willing to stand up for it, who are willing to stand up to be the light and shine the light of joy on depressive spirits. Who will be the seed to lead? What you say, teachers, can I encourage you this morning? The things that are coming from your mouth is not just a simple open your books to page whatever from history. We're going to learn about, you know, the World War II. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not just that. What, the things that come from your mouth have the ability to impact and shape the trajectory of the next generation. The the things that are coming from you, like, like it's, not just, it's not just words on a page. It's that you have the ability to impact the next generation. So I want to encourage you with that today. Don't, don't feel like, oh, well, I can't preach the Bible in schools. Don't feel that. No, don't stop worrying about preaching the Bible and start being the Bible. Start acting it out. In faith, start being like Jesus. When you walked in, you were given this awesome little band. It says WWJD. Those of you who weren't a Christian in the early 90s or the late 90s or the early 2000s, sorry. I hope I got that right. Those of you who weren't a Christian until if you're a baby Christian, you're like, what's this bracelet that says WWJD? So silly looking. It means what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do when other students are being bullied? Jesus would not join in the fight and beat them all up too. What, what would Jesus do when we're in the staff lounge and people are talking smack about the other teacher who doesn't give the lesson as good as them? What would, what would Jesus do is he would impact the next generation and be the light and stop putting the, stop putting the lampshade on the light but letting it shine before men. He's called us to be salt and light, agents of change. Not to be hidden. The scripture says, this is not a secret. In fact, the message Bible says, we're going public with this, that's what WWJD means. We need a generation to stand up and say, I'm going public with my faith, not ashamed, not worried about what people are saying, not worried about the social status, but I'm stepping into my calling like Alexia just did. She, she's made her career into her calling and, and she stepped into this servitude. We need more people who are willing to be surrendered to God, who are willing to be surrendered to God to lead the next generation into a better future. We need giant slayers. We need people who look fear in the face, who look anxiety in the face, 
and say, I know I cannot say something. Maybe I can't say, always speak something to encourage you, but I can be who I need to be in Christ to impact those people. I could be it. I think we're always worried about, well, you tell me I need to be an educator and, and shine the light of Christ to people. And you tell me, you know, like I'm going to have a Bible study. And sometimes it doesn't look like a Bible study. You are a living and breathing Bible study. Sometimes the only, you, you've heard this before, we said it in church a lot. The only Bible they read is the one that they're looking at. There's people waiting to be impacted. There's people waiting for someone to give them just a glimmer of hope. We need it. There, there's even a deeper part that parents don't get to educate. Parents get to educate to an extent, but educators have so much influence in where the next generation will go. The next generation will be led. Don't take your influence lightly. That is God given. Amen? Amen. You know, we're going to be talking about the traits of a giant slayer. One of, one of the most impactful traits that you can have in your life as a giant slayer is to be trained in obscurity. What I mean by that, let's reference David real quick. In 1 Samuel 17, it says, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. Then it says, and when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. More faith in God that says, God, I know the next step I take is going to be hard for me. In fact, I know that the level of study that I'm going to pursue is going to be difficult. It's going to look like a giant. But God, you've given me the strength of David to say, this Philistine giant shall be like one of those lions and bears that I've already slayed with the Lord's strength stepping forward. So to be trained in obscurity, God hides those he loves till they're ready to be revealed. If you feel like you're in a season where your gift or talent has not yet been, re been, been made known to others or been revealed and put, put on display for others to see, I know it's not about that, but, but if you feel like it's unseen, if it's unheard of, you see, this is where David Learn how to hone his craft. It's where David, like, is the crazy guy that shows up. Who shows up with stones to a battle to slay a 20-foot giant? It doesn't make sense. But this is where David knew he had something else that was carrying him through it. He had something, he had some kind of strength. He knew that on his own strength, he could not do it. But he knew that with God's strength, he can pursue ahead. Yeah. And he knew that it wasn't going to be him that took down the giant. It was going to be God. <laughs> whatever giant you're facing this, this morning, whatever thing you're going through, that the next season that you're stepping into, maybe as a student, maybe as an educator, maybe as an administrator, things have shifted around, maybe COVID just messed up everything. Whatever giant you're looking at right now, God is going to give you the strength to overcome it, to step forward, to pursue, to go ahead in the name of Jesus. You know, one of my, one of my things about obscurity is is I love playing the guitar. And one thing that I've learned is, you know, things that are put on display and for others to hear that, that, that normally people praise. And I, I take all that praise and I give it to God. But, but things that people kind of glorify and, and, and give me compliment on are things that were birthed in a secret place. 
And this is what I've learned about my gift that the Lord gave me, is that God gave me the talent, but I have to develop the skill. God gave you the talent for where you're at. He's put it, it, he's birthed the dream inside of you for the thing that you're doing right now. Even if you're, you're not in school, you're in a job, you're in the workplace, God gave you a talent. If you're working in a coffee shop, I don't know what it is this morning, but whatever you're doing, God gave you the inspired dream and talent. He placed it in your heart. But it's your job to start developing the skill. And it takes work. Uh oh, I just said a bad word in church. <laughs> Students, it takes work. It takes work. In anything you want to pursue, it takes work in secret. You see, a good warrior is prepared in the presence of God and revealed in the presence of his enemies. That's how giants fall, because you're walking in the boldness and the confidence of God. How many of you want to walk in the confidence and boldness of God in your life today? Amen? You got to be trained in obscurity. Next, the enemy underestimated David. David was this guy walking down, and he didn't look like everyone says that he looked, although some people say he was very strong and muscular. But what my text over here says is that David was, the Philistine looked at him and saw David and he said, he disdained him. He disdained him. He basically said, yo, who's this guy? <laughs> Who is this guy coming to me? Way, way tinier than me. Way more unqualified than me. Way more not smarter than me. Who is, who is this guy? And David's reply was this. He said, come to me. Let me tell you something. We need more people who are bold in this generation to say, hey, giant, I ain't afraid of you. Come to me. Because what's inside of me is more powerful than what's ahead of me. And I could go through anything when God's got my back. La presencia de Dios está aquí. He's with you. He's for you. He's not against you. And we look at even the simplicity of education and we say, man, how would God be looking out for me here? No, God wants to be in it. He wants to be all around it. He wants to open up the doors of favor for you. He wants to open up those opportunities for you. He wants you to get the best education so that you could accomplish the dream he's placed on the inside of you. Amen? So, you have this generation that God's hand is on, but sometimes we underestimate what God can do. Yeah. Sometimes we take back and say, I, I'm, I, under, I underestimate this because I, I've never been trusted with something this big. And if God is, if you feel like your cup is getting really full, if you feel like your cup is like running over, not in a good way. It's because God is expanding the ability for you to trust with more. God is expanding your ability to step forward and be challenged and stretched. In fact, if you're comfortable right now, it might be because you are stepping back from your calling. If you're comfortable right now, it might be because God put a dream there and you said, that is impossible. There's no way I can ever do that. So I'm going to settle for this. Like, like I'm going to study for in my education and I, I'm not going to go to, to that degree because people have decided to tell me that that's not possible or that's too hard or I'm not smart enough. You know, no, 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 no. The, 
See, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to put voices around you because the enemy underestimates what you can do with God's power living on the inside of you. The enemy underestimates it. But can I encourage you today, whatever sphere you are walking into, whatever place you are walking into and you feel uncomfortable, take the next step. Because it's about to get good, baby. That means God is challenging you. He is stretching you. It feels like pressure. But really, there's breakthrough on the other side. And I'm not talking about just your like, oh, healing breakthrough. No, I mean, I mean that when you're being challenged, when you feel like you're in the fire, that means something good is coming. Something fresh is coming. Move ahead in faith. Step out in faith. Can I just encourage you? Can I, can I give you this word this morning? Take another step. Take another step. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Take another step. Ooh, it feels like pressure. It feels like every voice around you is saying that's wrong. For that, for that business you're trying to start this morning, can I just say that? Take another step. God is about to bless you. God is about to open doors of favor for you that you've never imagined before. It's uncomfortable. You've been hitting a wall every time. You've been uncomfortable. You've been like, man, I cannot get past this part of it. Take, can we just model, even after our pastor here, who persists over and over for the Harlingen campus, and now we're about to break ground in the next month or so. That is every time you hit a wall, every time the city said, no, you got to go back to the drawing board. No, you got to do this. No, you got to do this. Every time a voice tries to come, don't let fear talk you out of anything. And this was, this was my daughter the other day. <laughs> She was, she was swimming, and she's like, Dad, I want to play with toys. So she goes and gets all these toys. We're swimming at uh, my grandma's and grandpa's pool that they've had there for a long time. And the pool, you know, had little leaves, and it looks a little older. It's, the pool was probably built in the early, what, 80s or something like that. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not a comfortable place. Mia's like, she's at the edge here, and mom's saying, we can't leave the pool until you go dive down and get that last little ring. You've seen the little rings that sink all the way to the bottom, and yeah, you have, then you have to get them with the pool net because they don't want to go swim and get them. Yeah. So this was our teaching moment for our daughter. We said, Mia, you got to jump in the pool. She's looking at me right now, giving me a look. You got to jump in the pool, go to the bottom, and get and reach for the loop. So the little hoop thing. So we're doing this and Naomi's trying to encourage her for like 25 minutes. And it ended in this just cry fest of like, I can't do it. Like, no, I don't want to do it. I, I, just feeling all this fear. She stepped out of the pool. You know, she went inside. She just chilled out. And uh, what I told her as she was going inside was this. I said, Mia. Don't let anything ever talk you out of, don't let fear talk you out of accomplishing something that God puts on the inside of you to accomplish. Don't let fear, because this is what happens, is we realize that the depth that God is telling us to swim in, I'm preaching here, if you follow me just a second. The depth that God is pushing us to swim in is actually easier than we thought. But because we let fear talk us out of it, we couldn't get to the breakthrough blessing that he's calling us to. Don't let fear. <laughs> this is your dream. This is the vision. This is like, this is your goal that God placed on the inside of you. And he says, this is all you have to do is just stop letting the enemy's voice inside and I will give you the strength to jump in the water and get it and go 
don't chase after it. Can I encourage you today, educators, teachers, students, administrators, jump in the water and go get it. It's not too hard because nothing, because nothing is too hard for our God. Nothing is impossible for our God. Jump into the deep end, baby, because he's about to open up new windows of favor. He's about to open up new doors. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Don't give up, but press into what God has for you. Amen. Don't let it talk you out because you're one step away. You're just one breath away from deciding to accomplish what God has given you the strength to accomplish. One step. My wife took Mia back outside and said, we gotta do this. After I gave her the inspiring talk, never let anything, never let anything take away from you pursuing your dream. This is life. I, I grabbed the hoop and I said, this is life. Don't let fear talk you out of jumping in the deep end. What you'll find at the depths is that the strength you needed was there all along. And that's what we did. My wife went back outside. She encouraged Mia. She jumped in the pool. She swam back and forth. And then they said, here's the ultimate test. Can you go deep, dive deep down in the bottom? And they threw the loop back in there. She went all the way to the bottom and back up. Easy. I should rephrase my na the nature of how I think about God in that some people say God's way is not always easy. No, 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 no. God's way is most of the time easy, but not the way we want to. Let me say that again. God's way is most of the time, the, the place that he's leading us in, it's actually easy because he's given you strength to accomplish it. But sometimes we don't want to do it his way and we try to do it on our own strength. And when we do it on our own strength, we fail. But God's will, God's way, it's not easy to submit to it. But the path is a lot easier in the end because it's more rewarding. little shift with your theology this morning. I know you're like looking at me like, oh, wow. <laughs> he went there. But I found most of the time in my life when I'm complaining, when I'm frustrated, like, God, where are you leading me? Where, where are you leading the, Like, where are you leading things? Most of the time when I get in a frustrated place, it's because I'm not letting him lead and because I don't want to get in the deep end. No one wants to make the sacrifice. But the sacrifice is essential to accomplishing the goal. Amen? Amen? Stand to your feet with me. I hope that blessed you this morning. I know we have a lot. But I want to close with this story of a teacher that inspired me at one moment. I was wanting to leave, just finish high school as fast as I can. It's like, get me out of high school so I can pursue music, do my thing, go for it. Ah, yeah. But, but one teacher left an impact on me that I, th I think impacted others that weren't even Christians, but impacted them forever. And her name was Melissa Sosa. She was actually singing on stage this morning, one thing that I realized is that I've never seen a teacher pour more life into their students. I mean, like, we laughed, we cried, we got inspired, like, like a teacher that inspired and, and lifted up, even if they wanted to go into a certain, what field do you want to go into? Oh, let me inspire you. One thing I realized about this educator, she's in the room right now. She's a 
probably about to come and sing. What I noticed is that the light of Christ that left an impact on those students forever changed their life. Like, like they still come to Living Way today, to the church. Back when it was a Christian school, yeah. But today they come when it was like, they come to the church and say, wow, Living Way School changed my life forever. All because, all because one educator decided, ah, I might not, I might not reach them with, with memorizing every single scripture in the Bible, but I might reach them by becoming what the Bible instructs me to become in Christ. What would Jesus do? Impact the sphere that God has given me with all that I am, with all that I can, fully surrender all out for Christ so that the next generation will be led in the ways of God. It's time to shine the light. Don't hide the lampshade any longer. Don't hide it anymore. This is your chance. This is your time. Closing with this, I just feel the need to say that we reference the story of David and we look back and say, really this guy stepped up and slew a giant with a stone? Like, is this real? <laughs> it's like everybody reading the book of Job. It's like, no, that can't be real. <laughs> like, this is not real. <laughs> Obviously, it takes faith to read the word to begin with. But we're reading this story and I think David realized that heaven was behind the stone that he was throwing. Can I just encourage you today, teachers, communicators, administrators, heaven is behind you. Whatever step you're taking, wherever you're going, whatever sphere of influence you have, heaven is backing you up. And that stone that you're about to throw at that giant that's in front of you, nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible because you got heaven behind you, baby. And when heaven's behind you, every giant falls before you. When heaven's behind you, everything comes into submission of the Lord because you're not operating on your own strength. You have his strength on the inside of you. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this place. Amen. I hope that encouraged you today. As we're closing in this moment, we have gifts for the students and the educators and the administrators in the room. If you're a student in this room, we're going to pray for all of them. But if you're a student right now and you're in this room, I want you to come forward. Come to the altar. We have a special gift planned for you. Our ushers are coming. If you're a student... If you're going into any sphere, if you're high school, if you're college, I think they're bringing even some more students, our little ones, they're leading the crew in here. If you're a student, come, come, come. We have a special blessing for you. We've put together a little something, a gift for you to help you fulfill your calling in Christ. Come on, come down to the altar, come down to the altar. We got a good crew. We got a good crew. We got a good crew. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, isn't this amazing? Can we give the Lord a hand clap for all the students? Man. What we're believing for the students today is just for wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, that God is in it. And I really want to declare over, because I've even seen this in the younger children, that, that no more fear shall hold them back. Can I declare that word? No more fear shall hold you back in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. He will follow you all your days. The fear that torments your mind. Students, the fear that torments your mind right now, I release it in the name of Jesus. And I say no more fear because perfect love casts out fear. And when you're receiving the love of the Father, when you're receiving His love, all fear must go 
in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every mind. Lift your hands, students. We take authority over every mind right now in school. We say in the name of Jesus, you have the mind of Christ. You have the mind it takes to accomplish it. My grandmother used to tell me that all the time when I would go to school and I felt, man, I don't have the strength to do this. I'm not smart. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. My grandmother would say, you have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus, every student, high school, college, you have the mind of Christ. Whatever you're at, pre-K, we pray for junior high. We pray for all of them right now. You shall receive the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for the kids. There's so many of them. Can we see? Can we sing? And then I'll pray for some of the kids. I want you to join us in worship. She We're just gonna keep praying. Me. Keep praying and singing over these kids this morning. Jesus. There's so many of them. Come on, kids, keep coming in. We're gonna pray. Can I get some of my ministers to lay hands on some of these kids? Let's, let's give them a blessing. Just come on the stage with me and give them official blessing. Come on, sing that out. Fear will never conquer me. I belong to Jesus. Come on, declare it. Next, we're going to call the administrators forward. I want the students to go ahead and fan out this way. If, can, if I can get all my kids' leaders to bring the students back over this way so we can make space for all the administrators. Make space for all the administrators. They're going to clear out as the band keeps singing. Let's, go, let's keep declaring this song over our kids, but also over our administrators, Fear teachers. Fear will never conquer me. Come on. Let them clear out. Declare that. We will never conquer. Never conquer. I, belong I belong to Jesus. Come on, come on. administrators here in the front right now we're gonna pray for you 
I just feel like this job is so important and the coordination of what happens in these schools is so important. You guys can fan out more this way so we can all see your pretty faces. Yeah, come on, step forward, step forward right up in here. We believe that there's just, when God puts you in a position to organize, when he puts you in a position to, to put things into place, that's a strategic place to be here. That's a strategic thing. And I just wanna pray into that this morning that those, those places that you need strength and encouragement to step out into, places that in faith, like, like man, I'm, I feel unqualified for this. How am I even doing this? I feel like God is going to re-equip you. Is that cool? The administrators today, I feel like God is going to re-equip you with things that you were like, I, I was deficient here. I, last year, last semester, like man, I felt so many times at this. I feel like going into this, just a simple prayer, God is going to re-equip you to do things that you've never even done before. Amen. Can I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus? Every administrator, as they keep singing, every administrator, we pray right now for the organizers of this thing, the thing that makes this work. In the name of Jesus, we say right now, let you be with every single one of them. Let your presence go before them. We cannot go without you. In the name of Jesus, but we're going ahead with your presence, with your presence, Lord, with your presence, Lord. They go forward. They go forward. They go forward. Fear will never conquer me. Fear will never conquer me. Fear of failure. Fear of friendships. Fear of what they might say. It will never conquer me. In the name of Jesus. No more fear. No more. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, sing it out. Let's have our administrators go ahead and fan back to your seats. Let's give them a hand clap. Can we do that real quick? Next, we want to pray for the teachers as we're getting ready to close. Teachers, you come down. If you're a teacher in any way, shape, or form, if you teach, even if you teach the littles, the little ones, pre-K, whatever you're teaching right now, let's get right here in this center section. Wow, wow, wow. So many teachers. So many teachers, come on, keep coming down. Keep coming down, come on, can we give them another hand clap? You know, the valley has become a very influential place for teaching. I don't know if you've, you guys have noticed that. Even if, even if you're not teaching maybe in the college arena, but the valley has become a very strategic place. In fact, I'm, I hear of a lot of people that come down to the valley just for the educational system that we have here. And I just believe that's for people of influence like yourself, people of influence like yourself and the school system in and of itself. The fact that we've been able to grow as a city and a community, it just, it blows my mind. And we cannot grow without the teachers who would step forth and teach the students and lead the next generation. We can't do it without you. So we save the best for last. We're gonna pray, lift your hands, teachers. Right now, Holy Spirit, let your presence go before them in a new and mighty and fresh way. Let the light not be hidden, but let it shine before men in a greater way. Let Holy Spirit, fill those classrooms with your presence, mighty God. Fill those classrooms with your presence that the students would have nothing to fear, that the teachers would have nothing to fear, but embrace the calling that you placed, embrace the dream that you placed on the inside of them to develop the skills and go forward in the educational system. Right now we pray for the community of Brownsville, that the educational system would just begin to grow, that, that they wouldn't have to leave to get better education, Lord, but right here in the RGV, they can get the best education they can get in the nation. We pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you are opening doors for these teachers. You are opening newer doors for these teachers than they've seen before. More favor, God, more blessing on their lives. In the name of Jesus, the name above names, and everybody shout it. Amen. 
back to your seats. We're going to pray for anyone maybe who's not in school, but you're going into a workplace and this is just a new season. You're out of summer and now you're going back to work and you just need God's hand of provision on your life. I'm not going to ask you to come down, but if that's you right now, before we pray for those who want to receive Christ, I want you to lift your hand if that's you. If you're going back to the workplace, if you're going back to your job and you say, man, I just need some new divine favor in my job. I, I haven't been seeing the Lord in this job. I don't even know if this is the job he wants me to do, but I'm stepping out in faith. If that's you right now, I'm gonna pray for you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your divine hand be upon their life in a new way like they've never seen before. Open the doors. Open the doors. In the workplace, let the environment be presence-filled, presence-minded. Holy Spirit, that when people, when they would walk into their workplace, that they would see the light of Christ shining brightly in them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone shout it in this place. Come on, shout amen. Come on, if you believe that, if you receive it, if you know that God is going to do something great in this school year, in this new semester, wherever you're at, come on, give all a shout of praise. Lift up a shout of praise and pour and confidence. Come on, sing it out again. Fear will never conquer. Woo! Come on, you sing it out. Lift your hands. Every hand in the building raise. This is who we belong to. Come on. child of God. I said, you're children of God. Now walk out in faith and go get them. Walk out in faith and go get it. Whatever you've been called to accomplish, whatever dream you have on the inside of you, stop letting fear talk you out of it. Step into it. Step into it. Step into it. Right now, if you want to receive Christ, if you came in the room and you're brand new, you're like, I do not know what you what you were talking about, but I want all of it. <laughs> I want all of what this guy was talking about. If this is what you want to receive right now, I, we're just going to pray this boldly. All the congregation is going to pray it. It's not going to be any embarrassment or shame in the room. We're just going to pray this boldly together. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I invite you in. I make you Lord of my life. Come live in me forever. I receive that you died upon the cross. 2,000 years ago, and I receive my resurrection in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hey, we want to thank you guys for watching us today on Facebook and YouTube. You are an extension of our Living Way family, and we can't. Hey, we want to thank you guys for watching us today on Facebook and YouTube. You are an extension of our Living Way family, and we count you a part of this great work. You know, if you're watching today and, and you've never prayed that prayer and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say simply right now, Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender it into your hands. Be the Lord of my life and give me a brand new beginning and a fresh start. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer text, save to the number at the bottom of your screen. We want to 
put some stuff in your hands to help you on your Christian journey. And then also, if you're new today, uh, you can text NEW to the, at the bottom of your screen, the number there, and we will get some information out to you. We have a gift for you today, actually, and we'd like to bless you with that as well. We love you so much, and those of you that really feel the vision here and you want to contribute, you can do that online. You can give to the ministry, uh, offering of any size, and we'll be standing with you that God will bless you and prosper your life in a mighty way. We bless you, and remember, you've been blessed to be a blessing. We'll see you next time.